Hi everyone, so welcome back to my channel Mathematic Girls Party 326. So in this particular video, I'm going to cover the second exercise of the topic set, chapter set, class 11th, of course. I have already made the first uh, exercise uh, you know, solution in my another video. So I'm going to put the link of that particular video in the description box. Make sure you watch that video first and then you come to this one, okay? Of course, that is exercise 1.1 and this is exercise 1.2. So, of course, you should watch that particular exercise first because in that, not only I have covered the exercise solution, but I have all, also covered the basics of sets. Okay. So, here I'm going to directly start with the solution. So, without further delay, let's get started. So, in the first one, the question is, which of the following are examples of null set? First of all, let's understand what is the meaning of this null set. Null set is like an empty set. Another name of null set is also empty set. So let me write down that null set is also called empty set. All right. Now, what is the meaning of empty set? It's like, you know, you are trying to find out the solution or the answer for a set, but you are not getting anything. For example, if I ask you, can you tell me the set of all the name of the months in an year whose name starts with B? There is no answer because we do not have any month whose name starts with B, right? That is why this is an empty set because you could not find any element, all right? So same way, in the first question, it is asking set of odd natural numbers divisible by two. First of all, let us understand about natural numbers. Natural numbers are all the numbers starting from one till infinity. What are odd natural numbers? All the natural numbers which are not divisible by two. That is the definition of odd natural numbers. But here it says set of odd natural numbers, which is divisible by set. So, of course, there is no answer. There is no solution for this. That is why the first one is a null set. So, you can write down as well. How can you write down? You can write down. Since in the set of odd natural numbers, there is no number which is divisible by 2. That is why it is a null set. Okay. So, yes, we are done with the first one. Let's move to the second one. Set of even prime numbers. Okay. So, first of all, let me tell you what is a prime number. Prime number is that number which is divisible by 1 and itself. Right? So, here it is asking even prime number. Do you know that we have only one even prime number? And that one even prime number is 2. And 2 is... Because we are able to get an answer for this question. We are getting at least one element. That is why it is not a null set. Because it's not like we are not getting anything. We are getting something. We are getting an answer too. That is why it is not a null set. Let's go to the third number. X such that X is a natural number. X is lesser than 5 and X is greater than 7. So if I say... X is greater than 5. That means what are the values of X? Because X is a natural number. So the values are going to be, it's lesser than 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Another condition is given that X is greater than 7. And of course, X is a natural number. So the second case is 8, 9, 10, and so on. Can you find anything common? Because here it is saying that X such that X is a natural number where X is lesser than 5 and X is greater than 7. You can't find any number that is satisfying both the condition that is lesser than 5 and greater than 7. That is why it is a null set because you did not get any solution for this. Let's move to the fourth one. Why such that y is a point common to any two parallel lines? Let me make you understand about parallel lines in short. Parallel lines are those lines which are never going to meet, even if you extend. You know, indefinitely in both the directions. So here it is saying that y is such that y is a point common to any two parallel lines. If the lines are parallel, there will be no point that is common to those two parallel lines. Again, it has, because it has no common point, that means you could not get any solution and that is why it is also a null set. So in the first question, the first one is a null set and the fourth one is a null set. Other than these, the second and third, they are not null sets. Okay. Next question is, which of the following sets are finite or infinite? This is also very easy and very simple. So let us first understand the difference between finite or infinite. 
a finite set is that set in which the number of elements you can count okay infinite set exactly opposite a set in which you cannot count the number of elements for example first question is the set of months of a year can you not count the months of a year yes of course we can count there are 12 months of a year that 12 is a finite number we can count it january february march april may june july august september october november december these are the 12 months of a year that we know that is why it is a finite set next it says 1 comma 2 comma 3 dot 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 let me make you understand what is the meaning of this dot 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 this this dot 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 simply means that it is an infinite set okay because it has an infinite number there is no end okay this dot dot means it goes on and on and if it goes on and on we cannot count it and if we cannot count it it is not a finite and if it is not finite it is infinite So therefore, the answer is infinite. Let's go to the next one, and that is one comma two comma three comma dot dot dot. You can see the end number. It says the end number is hundred. So if you try to count, of course you can count that there are hundred elements. Hundred is a finite number. It is countable. That is why it is a finite set. Next, the set of positive integers greater than hundred. So if you try to find out the answer for this, you will get one hundred and one. One hundred and two, one hundred and three, and if you see, it will just go on and on. It will never stop. That is why it is an infinite set. Next, the set of prime numbers less than ninety-nine. So, of course, first of all, I want to tell you that it is a finite set because we can count it. If you try to find that what are the set of prime numbers less than ninety-nine. i just want to tell you that the definition of prime number is it is that number which is divisible by 1 and itself only for example 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 etc try to find out till 99 and of course it is countable that is why it is a finite set so yes we are done with the second question as well next is state whether each of the following set is finite or in, infinite again the same is same question the set of lines which are parallel to the x axis okay so first of all let me show you this imagine that this is our x axis yes okay yes so you know that this is your x axis and this is your y axis right so what it says the set of lines which are parallel to x axis if this is x axis how many lines can be drawn parallel to the x axis in finitely many lines you can't even count how many lines can you draw that is going to be parallel to the x axis so of course it is an infinite set Let's go to the next one. The set of letters in the English alphabet. Of course, it is twenty-six. We all know this. Okay, this is a very basic question. So it's A E, uh, sorry, A B C D E F till Z. So of course, it is countable. We know the number is twenty-six. That is why it is a finite set. Next is the set of numbers which are multiple of five. So if you try to find out the multiple of five, you can see. The multiple of five is going to be five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, and it will go on and on. It will never stop. And if it will never stop, that means it is infinite. And if it is infinite, that means it is an. It, that means it is not finite. And if it is not finite, that means it is infinite. All right. This was again very simple. So the answer is infinite. Now after this, we have two more questions in question number three. So let me show you the question first, and then we will start with the solution. So I'm going to show you the next two questions of question number three, right here. All right. So these are the questions. So let's do the fourth question first, and in the fourth question we have the set of animals living on the earth. Can you count all the animals living on this earth? You can't count. maybe some of them we do not even know 
So therefore, this is clearly, you can say that it's, it is, okay, so I, okay, one second, the set of animals living on the earth, we can count the animals. If you just, you know, uh, yeah, I'm extremely sorry. If you just try to find out the count, and if you start finding all the animals on this earth, it can be countable. See, I know it is very difficult task, but if you want to find it, you can absolutely find out the total number. And because if you can find out the total number, that means it is a finite set. So it is a finite set. Next is the set of circles passing through the origin 0, 0. Okay. The set of the circles passing through the origin 0, 0 is an infinite set. Why? Because an infinite number of circles can pass through the origin, right? And because an infinite circles can pass through the origin, therefore it is an infinite set. All right. Now, in the next one, we have to say whether A is equal to B or not. That means it is also whether A and B are equal sets or not. So let me first tell you what is the meaning of equal sets. Equal sets are like, you know, the number of elements should be same as well as the, the, X, the, the elements should be exactly same. It's not just about, uh, you know, like whether the number of elements are same or not. In this, the same element should be present as well. Okay. So let's understand this. A is equal to A, B, C, D and here A is equal to D, C, B. In set, the order is not important. A, B, C, D is same as D, C, B. Because you can just see that A is here, A is here. B is here, B is here. C is here, C is here. D is here, D is here. So clearly, you are having the number of elements same. Exactly the same elements as well. That is why A is equal to. Next, we have 4, 8, 12, 16. Here we have 4, 8. There is no 12. And if there is no 12, clearly, it's not. Next, 2, 4, A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and B is X such that X is a positive even integer and X is less than equal to 10. So if you try to find out the value of B, you can see that B will have the element 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 only because it is X such that X is a positive even integer and X is less than equal to 10. So it is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And here also we have the same. That is why in this case, it is going to be A equals B. Next is we have A equals X such that X is a multiple of 10. And here B is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. X is a multiple of 10. What is the meaning of X is a multiple of 10? That means it will have an element like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all multiples of 10. But in this, we are not having a multiple of 10. We are having, it's like you can say, uh, a multiple of, you know, 5, right? So, of course, they are not exactly the same. That is why A is not equal to B. Next is, are the following pairs of sets equal? So, in this exercise, basically, it's all about equal sets and null sets, okay? So, let's do this. A equals 2 comma 3. And B equals X such that X is a solution of X squared plus 5X plus 6. So this is a quadratic equation. If you try to simplify this and get the value of X, you will simplify this using middle term split. X squared, we can write on 5X as 2X plus 3X. And this as plus 6 equals 0. Now from here, if I take X common, it will become X plus 2. And from here, if I take uh, 3 common, it will become X plus 2 equals 0. So I'm getting x plus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0. We know that if we have the product of two uh, you know, terms 0, then it implies either the first term is 0 or the second term is 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. It simply means x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. So what is the element in the set? It's negative 2 comma negative 3. But here we have 2 comma 3. And that is why they are not equal. All right. So therefore, they, uh, A is not equal to B. Let's move to the next question. A equals X such that X is a letter in the word follow. Right. You know one thing uh, that is clear if you have watched my first video. That is exercise 1.1. 1 
and if you have not watched it again i'm requesting you to watch that video because in that i've explained all the basic concepts then it will be very very simple to understand you know like the further exercises so x as that x is a letter in the word follow so we know that in a set we don't repeat things we don't repeat the elements so if you want you can like you have to write or not want you have to write down only you know the elements once so f o then again l then again l which we will not repeat then o which we will not repeat then w which we will write down and you can see f o l w f o l w they are same so therefore a is equal to b in the second question next is from the sets given below select equal sets okay this is interesting so a equals 2 comma 4 comma 8 comma 12 right b equals 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 uh c equals 4 comma 8 comma 12 comma 14 and b equals 3 comma 1 comma 4 comma 2 so i can clearly see that this is 1 2 3 4 And here one, two, three, four. They are equal. So of course B is equal to B. Next is I can see E equals minus one comma one and G equals one comma minus one. So of course E is equal to G. And other than these, I cannot see any other equal sets. So therefore we are getting just two sets equals. That is B equals B and E equals G. So from this we got the answer. That A B is not e. B is equal to D and E is equal to G. So we have only B and D are equal sets and E and G are equal sets. Now here I did this question very quickly because I did not write on a lot of things, right? So if you want to just be little elaborative, you can just start writing like A equals to four, A comma twelve. In B we do not have the same elements. That is why A is not equal to B. In C we do not have the same elements like A. That is why A is not equal to C. Similarly for D, similarly for E, similarly for F, similarly for G and for H. Same way for B, A, B, C, B, D. Not B A because A, B and B A like it's the same thing. No, we don't need to repeat it. So next is B C, B D, B E, B F, B G, B H. In this only B and B are equal. The rest you can just prove that the elements are not common. That is why they are not equal. And same with the other elements as well. And that is it. We are done with the. Second exercise as well. So exercise one point two was a very short ah uh, exercise. So we are done with this. I hope you understood each and every question. In the next part of the video, I am going to cover next exercise, which is exercise one point three, in which subsets I am going to start with. Okay. So again, the next video is also going to be very important. So make sure you watch that video as well. I'm going to upload it super soon. Uh, another thing I want to tell you that uh, you know, if you want to understand the next part, the next exercise, make sure you watch this particular video and the video that I have put in the uh, you know description box. The link I have put it in the description box. So make sure you watch that as well to just understand the basic concepts of sex. So yes, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching my video. and thank you so much for being a subscriber as well but if you are watching my video and if you have not subscribed to my channel i request you to please subscribe to my channel and support me thank you so much